Okay, so um, relative frequency distribution. So you guys did relative. So REL is relative. FREQ is frequency. Relative frequency distribution tables. So you did frequency distribution tables, and this is an example of a table that you know we did that was um, a frequency table from, from one of my other videos. I'm going to extend it um, and do the relative frequencies to create a relative frequency table. And technically, you know, if I want a relative frequency table, I wouldn't have this column here. This would technically be replacing this column, but since this is here, I'm going to use it. So relative frequency could be a decimal or a percent. So relative frequencies are, you know, technically represented as percents or the decimal versions of percents. Um, first of all, I want to know how many total data values are in this um, data set. And to do that, what do I do? I add up all the values, right? So I have 2 plus 13 plus 10 plus 3 plus 3. I have a total of 31 data values from this um, data set for this frequency table. I want to find the relative frequency of the first class. So if I'm creating a relative frequency table from a frequency table, I'm not changing the classes. I'm changing the frequency column into a relative frequency column. So this is, re again, replacing this. So my first, um, let me just organize a little bit. My first relative frequency. So what I need to know is, you know, what percent of the total represents a frequency of two? So two data values out of the 31 total are in this frequency. So what percent are in this uh, class? Two out of a total 31. Well, let's do two out of 31. Two divided by 31 is equal to, again, uh, zero point. So I'm going to take three digits to the right of the decimal because if I want to convert it into a percentage, I want to the nearest tenth of a percent, right? So 0 0.065, 0 0.065. So the relative frequency of the first class is 0 0.065 or 6.5% of, uh, uh, of the data values from the data set are in this class or lie between 28 and 65 inclusive. So again, frequency or relative frequency is either the decimal or the percent version of, you know, that class. Um, so you take the part over the whole and you can multiply by 100% if you're converting it into a percent or move the decimal two places to the right. So if I want the relative frequency of the second class, I'm going to take 13 out of 31. 13 out of 31. And then again, I'm going to take three digits, so 0.419. So 0 0.419 or, I don't like that, <laughs> too low, or 41.9% of the data values are between or within 66 to 103 inclusive or in this class. Same thing, 10 out of 31 for this relative frequency. 10 out of 31 is equal to, again, 0.323, so 0. 323 or 32.3%. These are my relative frequencies. Sometimes you're asked to do relative frequency in decimal, sometimes in percent. So, you know. And then last but not least, 3 out of 31. I'm going to say 0 0.097. 0 0.097 or 9.7%. This is the same because it's the same frequency. So the relative frequency should also be the same. 9.7%. Um, and these are the relative frequencies for this um, frequency table. So if I'm creating the relative frequency table, this column is just taking the place of this one. Now, a quick check to make sure you did not calculate anything wrong. If I add up the percentages, 100% represents the total set. So I'm expecting 6.5 plus 41.9 plus 32.3, plus 9.7, plus 9.7, to be approximately 100%, which it is approximately 100%. As long as it's very, very close to 100%, then I didn't make any mistakes.
So approximately, so if you guys see a squiggly equal sign, that means approximately. This is approximately 100%. So if it's not perfect, it's just rounding stuff. Um, so these are the relative frequencies of um, this frequency table. Um, so this is a relative frequency distribution table. So instead of frequencies, we have relative frequencies. Um, I'm going to do another type of table. I'll refer back to this also. And this table is called, and I'll, I'll ask questions after, a cumulative frequency table. Cumulative frequency table is also going to come from a frequency table, but <clears throat> the classes, now what do they represent, number of calls? The classes are going to change, you know, for cumulative frequency table, whereas um, the classes in a um, relative frequency table don't change from a frequency table, but they will change for a cumulative frequency table. And obviously, this column is going to be cumulative frequency instead of frequency or relative frequency. So cumulative means sum. So anytime you hear cumulative, you should think of a sum. So um, the first row or class, the first row in the cumulative frequency table that's coming from this frequency table is going to come from the first class. So the upper class limit of the first class is 65. The lower class limit of the second class is 66. Two represents the frequency or number of data values in this class between 28 and 65 inclusive. So I can have, you know, a data value from 28 to 65 or, you know, could be 28, could be 65. I don't know what those values are. So what I'm going to do is um, to include all these two data values, I'm going to say um, for my first row here, I hate that that keeps coming up. Um, the number of calls that are less than 66. The number of calls that are less than the lower class frequency of the second class. Well, how many were lower than that? Well, two were lower than that. Why don't I use 65? Because those two might be included in the 65, right? They might actually be 65. I don't know what they are. This is an inclusive thing. So I have to go here to include all those two data values. So back to the cumulative frequency, there are two data values, cumulative, that are less than 66. Well, what's the next row? How many are less than the next lower class limit, 104? Well, how many are less than 104? Were the two, let me use a different color. Well, there were the two from the first, and now also the 13 from the second are lower than 104. So the two and the 13 frequency, those values, there are a total of 15 data values that are less than 104. Well, how many are less than the next lower class limit, 142? Well, I had <laughs> the two, the 13, and now, how many less than 142? And now the 10 are less than 142. So obviously cumulative, right? Sum, I'm adding. So now 25 total cumulative are less than 142. How many are less than the next lower class limit? 180. Well, I had <laughs> the 2, the 13, the 10, and now another 3. So now there are 28 that are less than 180. Well, how many are less than, okay, now what's left? Well, I stop at 217 in my frequency table, but if I were to continue it, what would be the lower class limit here? It would be 218. So to continue, I'm going to use the lower class limit of the imaginary class coming after that. And I'm going to say, well, how many are less than 218 now? <laughs> well, I had the 2, the 13, the 10, the 3, and last but not least, this extra 3, adding up to a total of 31. Do I keep going? I'm done. 
Cumulative means sum. So what is it? Is it ironic? Is it a coincidence that that last value represents the total number of data values? No. Why? Because it's cumulative. This is the upper class or the lower class limit of this class not existing on the frequency table. So it should include everything. So it should have 100% of all the data values or the total number of data values in that last row. This is called a cumulative frequency table. So if you think or if you hear cumulative, you should always think of a sum.